We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and showing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that the climate crisis is likely to deepen environmental injustice in urban areas. Buildings rise with the heat. Pathetic monuments to the wretched needs of the insatiable few. Stadia, hotels, offices, towers, parking lots. Architectural follies lined up as garish dominoes upon the heaving, sweating backs of the common good. Green roofs and cooling walls cannot compete with these burning obsessions to truly make a mark. This poem is inspired by recent research published in Nature Communications, which has found that global warming is likely to lead to a huge increase in heat-induced labour loss, which will mainly impact those who work outdoors and for low wages. Environmental injustice can be thought of as the unequal distribution of negative environmental consequences across specific groups and communities. One of the most infamous recent examples of environmental injustice is the Flint water crisis, in which the drinking water for the city of Flint, Michigan became contaminated with lead and other waste products. This crisis disproportionately affected minorities and low socioeconomic classes who could not afford to fix the problem, find other sources of water, or leave the area. Many other studies have also shown that low income areas and communities of colour are overwhelmingly burdened with toxic landfills, polluting industrial plants, excessive rail traffic, and other pollution sources. In this new study, researchers have investigated how heat-induced labour loss, i.e. the amount of labour that is lost because of injuries and death brought about by extreme temperatures, also presents a growing example of environmental injustice. By modelling the heat stresses that will affect approximately 230 Chinese cities over the course of the next few decades, they found that urban heat stress will create significant labour losses, equating to $5.11 to $5.82 billion in additional losses per year by the middle of this century, more than double the current estimate of $3.11 billion. The majority of the economic losses in these urban areas will be borne by those who work outdoors and for low wages, such as those in construction and manufacturing, thereby deepening income inequality. The researchers suggest that the use of adaptation strategies such as green roofs and cool walls can be used to effectively lower the urban temperature, thereby reducing heat-induced labour loss, whilst also reducing the inequality-related impact on lower-paid sectors. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. Buildings rise with the heat, pathetic monuments to the wretched needs of the insatiable few. Stadia, hotels, offices, towers, parking lots, architectural follies lined up as garish dominoes upon the heaving, sweating backs of the common good. Green roofs and cooling walls cannot compete with these burning obsessions to truly make a mark. (music) 
In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading Post Construction by Kay Ryan. Kay Ryan is an American poet who was born in California in 1945. She's the author of several books of poetry, including Say Uncle, published in 2000, and The Niagara River, published in 2005. Her book, The Best of It, New and Selected Poems, published in 2010, won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry. She has also received the Union League Poetry Prize and the Morris English Poetry Award, as well as the Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize. Since 2006, she has served as a Chancellor of the Academy of American Poets, and from 2008 to 2010, she was the 16th United States Poet Laureate. Post Construction by Kay Ryan Who knows better than the builder not to trust a structure where it's off kilter how too few verticals bear too much roof. And still it may stand, proof against craft, strong as though ghost ribs and rafters had been added after one left. Thank you for listening to the Poetry Thank you Science. very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.